When it gets to be summertime, there's a certain term in the bass fishing world that you hear a lot, and that is ledge fishing. Well, today, that's what we're going to talk about. Hi there, welcome to The Bass Fishing Life. I'm your host, Steve Rogers. Today we're gonna to be discussing ledge fishing. What is it? How do we approach it? And if you've never been ledge fishing before, hopefully when this video is done, you will gain some confidence to go out and try this tactic on your own home bodies of water. Well, first of all, what is ledge fishing? Well, in the traditional sense, it usually takes places in rivers or impoundments where you have a very distinct main river channel or creek channel submerged, and you've got flats that come to a ledge where it drops off into deeper water. And that is the traditional sense of what ledge fishing is. Other anglers will refer to ledge fishing as anything that's off the bank, that is offshore, and is deeper water. So that's what ledge fishing is. Now, the first thing that we need to understand is that when you, you want to go out and ledge fishing and you're, you're heading for these deeper fish, these off the bank fish, we need to understand that there's going to be a lot of searching first. We need to have a little bit of a change in our mindset. It's a lot of hunting and hunting and hunting right here behind the council, reading our graphs before a lot of fishing takes place. And you may ask, why would I want to spend twice as much time behind the council as fishing? Well, the hope is when you're ledge fishing that you're looking for that huge payoff. You're going to find that school of super aggressive fish and you might catch one on every cast or every other cast and eventually work through to a whole bunch of just good quality fish. So that is the goal. A lot of searching to have a day that you may never ever forget. Now as we go ahead and break down the searching process, and I'm going to show you right here on this lake, and this particular lake is not a great ledge fishing lake, it's, it's an old reclaimed strip mine, but in this stretch right here where I'm sitting, there is a really nice ledge that drops from a 10 foot flat, a flat that's about 60, 70 feet wide, and then dips off into about 40 foot of water. So I'm going to run the boat, the electronics, down this ledge, see if I can pick up where some fish are sitting to kind of give you an idea of what you would look for on your electronics. Now I do want to say though that you want to try to find a group of fish. You know you're looking for a school of 15, 25, 30, whatever it might be. We're not really looking for singles, onesies and twosies. Um, we want to try to find a school and get that school fired up. So why are the fish on ledges. Well, they are looking for water that is more comfortable and that more comfortable water could be in the sense that it's cooler than it is up by the bank, but the real key, your best ledge fishing lakes have got current. So those bass are coming out to those breaks, off of those flats, getting onto those ledges. They're getting out into that current where it's more comfortable. It's washing food and bait fish up to them. It's just life is much better in the heat of the summer. And this ledge fishing pattern will go all the way up into the fall. So it is one of those traditional summer patterns that has some length to it. So if you can find some fish on ledges, it's going to be good to go for most of the summer. Um, right now you can see on the right hand side, I'm up on top of the flat. It varies anywhere from 8 to 10 foot and I'm heading out towards the, the channel, the drop off where it should get down 30, 35, 40, even more than 45 feet. And as soon as I find this edge, the ledge, I will start to run it. Okay, we're getting close here. All right, there it is. We're starting to drop off. You saw how I went from 
10 to like 37 feet right away. So I'm going to go ahead and start to move over and see if I can scan up this. Now, if you notice on the left side of the side imaging here, this is all darker because it's deeper. It's going off into that deeper water. And this is up top of the flat. And I have it scanning about 50 feet to the right. And we've got a lot of, that's a big weed vegetation right there. And we can start to see some little humps here of some other weeds. And I need to get back off of this ledge. I got back up on, to on top of it here. So you can see that it takes some time. Oh, there we got some good weed beds coming. And those weed beds are right on the drop off right there. And now what we're going to be looking for is if we can pick up any blips like right in here looks like there's a fish sitting right there a dot looks like we've got some that could be sitting right and here's a dot okay there's some more stuff that's sitting right on top of the ledge you can see the big weed beds off up on the top of it up on there so this one here is actually looks like it's got several fish and they're sitting part way down over the lip of that thing looks like they're right on the bottom i was hoping to see some suspended up but i'm not seeing any suspended up in the water column which is not a surprise we have got a bright blue bird day absolutely bright blue bird day which those fish are more apt going to be down and it looks like they are just over the lip of that flat over that ledge and just down on the side here's a nice patch of weeds right here here's another one i'm starting to get back on the top of it you can see all the the vegetation right on the edge of that particular ledge. So I'm gonna go ahead and head back here. And it's not a bad idea to go ahead and switch your scan to some down or split screen to get some down imaging as well to see, you know, more specifically, oh, here's some suspended ones right here. Here's some dots, some fish sitting up. So we'll probably turn around and go right back on that particular one. Now, once you locate some fish on your graph where you think there might be a school sitting there, we're only going to put a few casts through there before we move on and try to find a different school. We're looking for those fish that are fired up and ready to bite. You can definitely, once you find a school, work it over with a more finesse bait, a drop shot, something like that, especially if you're out there on the lake and there's just no wind. It's just really dead calm. Then you're probably going to have to try to finesse those fish. But if you got a little bit of chop on the water, we're going to put a few casts into those schools, see if those fish are fired up and hopefully have a really good time if they aren't biting we're going to check another school and see if we can get those fired up so what about the lures if we're only going to make a few casts into school to see if they're biting what lures are we going to use well i want to try to hit a couple different parts of the water column more the mid depths or just off the bottom and then the bottom of that particular area so as far as your mid-depth lures gonna throw a big swim bait out there could use a flutter spoon something that's going to present up off the bottom to see if we can get those fish to hit right away on a, on a more moving type of a lure after you make a few casts with that if there's no go then we're gonna go ahead and pick up something and work the bottom we could use a great big huge jig we could use a big heavy worm a deep diving crankbait all of those are really good choices and when you're working these ledges the little bit deeper water it's okay to get those weights up bigger you know half ounce three quarter ounce one ounce if needed because you when you're hitting the bottom you want to get it down there quickly fish it through that school of fish and see what happens so hit it with two or three or four different baits a few casts each and see if that school is fired up if not go ahead and move on now one thing we need to think about when you're making your casts ledge fishing towards schools is where you need to be pretty accurate so you can throw a marker buoy out there if you've got your electronics talking to each other from the front of the boat to the back of the boat make sure you got that waypoint pinned and you want to accurately cast to that school and come through it if you miss it by 10 feet 
let's say we're down off the ledge, down the side of the ledge, and you, and you get to deeper water, you're well below them, you're not going to get bit. If you miss it by 10 feet the other direction, you're probably not going to get bit. So as you're making your test cast to see if those fish are fired up and ready to go, you want to be accurate with those casts. So if you throw out there and you think you missed it, you're like, wow, that lure is taking too long to get to the bottom, just reel it in quickly, make another cast. Don't waste your time bringing in a cast that you know is way off the mark. Another nice thing about ledge fishing or this off the bank fishing is depending on the water, your home waters, there's a really good chance you're gonna have that part of the lake all to yourself. There's gonna be very little competition or pressure. And the reason is because it takes some time to locate those schools. But remember, you're going for the big payoff. You're, you're looking for that moment where you can just catch fish consistently almost every cast or in some cases every cast for 20 minutes a half hour or you know even longer in some cases. So lots of searching for hopefully one of the best days of fishing that you will ever have. And I gotta say, it's very satisfying when you locate a school on your electronics and then you are able to position the boat correctly, choose the right lure, and just start to catch fish after fish after fish. It's a great feeling. So I hope that this video gives you some confidence that you too can go ahead and go out and look for those offshore fish, those ledge fish, just have an excellent time. Hey, don't forget to go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For The Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.